Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. We have traveled to Southern Manufacturing. Now, lucky for you, you can sit back and relax, but we're the ones that have been traipsing up and down the aisles, bringing you all of our industry's latest technology. I've had my coffee. Now, let's go. Where's Colin? We're on a do guys, and I want to showcase this machine. You might have seen it before. It's a 1000 XP, but you've slightly upgraded it, and there's a, there's a change on the controls as well. So what have we gone and done? Well, we've upgraded it to the Mitsubishi. Right, okay. Yeah, um, it's got more power on the spindle. Okay. So yeah. basically, it's just been refined a little bit more. Right. So having the Mitsubishi controls, what does that mean? In I mean, how are things changing? You know, pulses, block, things like that? Yeah, I mean, um, it's got uh, six or seven million pulses per rev, yeah, on the Right, that's quite a few then. What is so, it, so if you've got that many pulses, what's that mean? Well, it just means that, um, in layman's terms, it's just more accurate, right. better surface finish because, right. yeah. Um, and then the block, eight, let me get that right, 8,192. So right. processing a lot quicker? Yes, yeah, it's a hell of a lot faster. Right. So uh, you've got a 32 gig SD card. Yep. Okay, so straight out of the box. Right. And there's a 32 gig. A uh, server on the back, data right. server. So again, extremely powerful in terms of processing, but also your memory you've as well. Got the memory to go with the program speed, so to speak. And the controls themselves, you've got the normal keypads and things there, but touchscreen and... Yeah, the uh, Mitsubishi is touchscreen, as well as buttons, take your pick, whichever one you want to use. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's advanced on other yeah. controls, so to speak. Okay, yeah, just moving a bit forward for that. So in terms of, I mean, you've got all that the block and pulse and things like that. In terms of like actually manufacturing components, cycle time, what does that mean to an engineer? Um, well, obviously, um, if you've got that much look ahead, yeah. uh, it's basically time saving on, on yeah. running jobs. Right. So, so you had an example, someone was running the part previously, about 27 minutes? 27 minutes, yeah. yeah. And then uh, it went down to, I think, 23 minutes. Right, okay. So that, I mean, it doesn't sound, it's about four minutes by my simple mass, but yeah. if you're doing lots and lots of parts, Big, big change. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. So the, long, the longer running, yeah. yeah, obviously the bigger saving that you will get. Absolutely. So. Rob, that's absolutely fantastic. Little showcase of the 1000 XP with the Mitsubishi controls. Wow, 67 million, that's super fast. Right, okay, let's have a look at this because I've got a chance now for you to get involved in our cycle time challenge. Now, this part here was made by DKW Engineering and on a star slider machine, SR20J, and it's got a bar feed on it too. Now, it's a toughie of material, we're talking about 316 stainless, it's an aerospace part. Now, Star have actually helped to make a special collet using EDM to hold this part on the sub-spindle for the second operation. Like I say, it's a tough material. They're going to then chamfer and deburr it. Now, all I want you to do is guess how long did it take to make this part on the Star slider machine. Put all your guesses in the comments box below to win a Swarf and Chips goodie bag. Now, let's go find Joe. So I'm here with Matt White of ITC. And Matt, we're going to be talking about a couple of new products here. This new Whittier face mill, talk, talk, tell us so about it. This is the VSM 890. Uh, it's a 12 mil edge length insert. Uh, it was shoulder mills, they went from two edges back in the old days with the APKT styles. Then they went to two edge double sided. We're now at four edge double sided. So eight edges per insert possible. Uh, we have is, is it true 90? It's true 90. All the VSM range are true 90. I think we've had the discussion before where I was skeptical about the True 90. Remember we said how you have to tow the insert out of the back and then in cut it, it comes back into 90. These seem to be very, very good and they're giving a good sidewall finishes, keeping size really, really good. So I'm happy with them and I would say True 90 quite happily now. So. Good, and what, what, what else is there? I know you've got some new solid carbide developments as well. So from ITC's own range, we have now uh, aluminium cutters with chip flutes, chip breakers in the flute. So when you're using uh, trachoidal type milling um, as your method, the problem we get with that is the swarf control. Now with the little chip breakers in, you'll ease your swarf control. If you can manage your swarf on trachoidal, you can do the application very well. So Yeah, stops the, uh, stops the tool from wearing when you're going into corners and things, and ultimately failure. And also, if you're running lights out, swarf becomes an issue. So if you're generating lots of swarf and you're generating lots of long needle swarf, it can bung up your system, it's hard to manage. So if you're keeping it nice and small and compact, 
more room for the swarf to come away from the job, more room for it to fill up in your swarf bin. So although it's very simple, sometimes it's just the management of the swarf that can control whether you can run the job lights out. So hopefully with these new innovations with chip breakers, uh, I think the next wave will become into your steel and your exotic type tooling as well. Just means using trachoidal milling becomes a method you can use like say and not worry about the swarf, uh, how you're going to manage it during the evening. So There we have it, two new products from ITC. Wow, some great tooling there. Thanks, Joe, and the guys on ITC. Now, someone alluded that they're doing loads of walking, loads of traipsing even around the aisles. I'm not sure that's really true. On the LK Metrology stand, we have a perfect example of automated inspection. We have the LK CMM with ceramic technology, and it's automating using this pallet system and robot. Now, Moving on, on the stand, we have something occurring with Lindsay. Steve, what are you doing to Lindsay? Well, new for this show, we've actually launched the new Freedom Arm. So basically, this is a portable CMM. With our laser scanning attachment, we can capture up to half a million points per second. So what better opportunity than to scan Lindsay's face? Now, what kind of applications would it be used for in the engineering industry? Well, there's many applications. I mean, because we can actually use this as a traditional CMM, so we've got probing, so for prismatic parts, but with scanning, it opens up the market totally differently. We've got arms that go up to four and a half meters, so you can imagine having this in, on the side of a vehicle. We can scan the full side of a car vehicle, so all those sheet metal parts can then be very quickly, easily, compared to CAD. And is it also saving a lot of inspection time, I presume? Yeah, exactly. I think where we see the benefit for this is also, if you've got a machine tool where you've actually got your part on the machine, you can take the CMM to the machine tool, put it on the machine bed and do a quick inspection just to make sure everything's good. Because you know what it's like, if you take a part off a machine and there's a problem, it's always very difficult to get it aligned back into the machine again. Well, Steve, you've certainly done a good job of Lindsay's face. So there you have it, even more technology on the LK Metrology stand. Whilst Lindsay is relaxing, Colin is over with GW Martin. We go on about automation investment. I don't say go on, but it's key to keeping being successful. GW Martin on MTD Network, we see a lot of you. But another story about your, well, moving forward, you've already got automation and investing, but you do need more. That's right, yeah, we've, have, we've invested heavily in automation and uh, new equipment over the last 18 months. We, we realise we want to grow the business, want to increase our turnover, but, not, but we can't do that by adding people. There's just, the skilled shortages out there make forces into automation, which is a good thing. Uh, but once you go that route, you start to look at the benefits of it and what you can get out of it. And we've realised it's been a very, very worthwhile investment. When you say automation, I'm think, you know, people might think robot arms, but in, in your case, you've got some CMZs and some Mazaks, but it's not necessarily robot arms, is that right? That's correct. No, we, we've brought in some gantry loaded machines. So we have a gantry loading, the twin spindle, twin turret machine, uh, but we have a bar fever attached to it too. So what it does, it gives us a flexible machine. You can put a 60, up to 65 mil bar at one end and rattle parts off as you normally would. Or you can go up to 220 mil diameter with, a, with the gantry loaded system as well. So you've got a very flexible piece of equipment, fully automated. And um, we've now, we started off 18 months ago without any automation. We've now got four machines fully automated with gantry loaded systems. And a great example of how it's helped, this part here, I understand you're making about 18,000 a year. How has having that automation helped you? Yeah, I mean, in round numbers, we, we make 18,000 roughly of these a year. On the they're way, not made roughly, they're made very, you know. <laughs> made, made perfectly. Uh, uh, but, but really, I think when we made them before, we were utilising about 80% of one machine's time to do that. You know, it was taking up quite a lot of time. Because it's all manual labour, lo manual loading, uh, but we've now produced the same number on the uh, CMZ machine and it's taken up about 30% of the capacity. So it gives you an example of how the, the dramatic change automation can make. Brilliant, Richard, great. So GW Martin, Richard Blake, Investing Automation. Thank you very much. Thank you. As you can tell, I'm doing all the work. Lindsay's been mooching around. But Lindsay, what have you got there? I have got my bookmark for my Kindle. Oh, she's been using these props. Dreadful gags. Think you're a bit of a... Joker? Uh, you're older than a dinosaur. Not really happy about that, but it's a great part here. What are they made on? They are made on Matsura's HP Jet Fusion and it's all 3D printed, every single piece. 
Absolutely. Some fantastic technology. Lindsay, quickly, what do you like? What have you seen that you like at the show? You know what I like is we have the luxury to go out to lots of different places, lots of events, but I like seeing the finished product and all of the companies having their part showing the versatility Brilliant. of the technology out there. Okay, part of things I don't like, your gags, things I do like, loads of automation, new technology, absolutely fantastic. Lindsay, something coming up soon? Yeah, there's a big show coming up soon. So all we want to do is encourage you to go out there, get out there into the industry, see what's going on. And, you know, there's maybe a show coming up called Mac at the NEC soon. So, so end the show. What do we say, Lindsay? Keep, Keep those, those spindles, spindles turning. turning.